Hello everybody, and welcome to another lecture on computer architecture. Today we're going to look at the MIPS registers. As I told you in the last lecture, I've shown you a, a data flow diagram, and part of this data flow diagram was actually uh, the, the registers. Let me show you this here. This is what I want to show you first. We had this uh, flow diagram of, uh, for, of the data. So as you remember, uh, everything what you see here is inside the processor, except here for the main memory. And part of this was the 32 registers, which are then uh, containing the information that will be locally processed. So uh, it's very close to the arithmetic logic unit for it to be very fast. And then what is the instructions are copying things from the, in principle, things from the registers here to the arithmetic log logic unit, do some kind of operation and putting it back in the registers. If not, in uh, some cases, we can actually have access to the external memory and things will be copied to or from the registers to main memory. But uh, for the moment, Let's uh, concentrate on these uh, 32 registers that are here. Because apart from uh, this, we have 32 registers, which I will show you in a moment. Then we have this high and low for arithmetic operations. We have the program counter and we have the instruction register. So these are the registers. And then we have local latches, which are called RS, RT, and RD, which are the source, target, and destination latches, where you can temporarily store information or where the information is going uh, through. But now I want to talk to you a little bit about these 32 uh, registers that are here because they have they all serve a special function. They are actually this is just a convention. This is the best to use this convention because then you can exchange programs with your fellow uh, informatics engineers and you will not have confusion. You can actually distribute code and as long as you all follow this convention then nothing will go wrong. Uh, so uh, let me see where where to begin. Well the first one it has as I say it has 32 registers apart from a high low program counter and instruction register and the first one or actually number zero is actually also called number zero in your MIPS programming you can use either just dollar zero up to dollar 31 or you can use this actually already name dollar zero up to dollar ra so dollar zero this is a very strange one and in the this uh, this way that this uh, register always contains zero so you cannot change it you cannot write to it you can only read it and the read value is always zero so what use would that be well let me remind you that we have a risk instruction set and the risk instruction set means that we are limited amount of instru instructions. We have only six bit for the instruction, meaning we have two to the power six, that is 64 instructions. And with that, we have to do everything. One thing, for instance, that does not exist is copying an instruction uh, um, information from one register to the other. So that doesn't exist that maybe I want to go from here from the fifth register and I want to copy it to the uh, first register, this one. This instruction doesn't exist. If, anyway, it has to go through the arithmetic logic unit. So how does it do that? Copying from register A to register B, it is simply adding zero to it and then placing the result in the destination register. A little bit strange, but in this way we don't need a copy instruction. The copy instruction actually is at zero to a register and then placing the, de uh, the result in the destination register. It's a little bit trick. It's a small trick. So the first one is zero, always contains zero. You can only read it. You cannot use it as a destination, um, as one of the destination, as a destination register. Maybe the compiler actually will complain about it. If not, I guess it will complain about it. I uh, never tried it. But anyway, it doesn't make sense to write in the zero register. It is just there. It's for reading and it's always zero. Now, the ones that uh, uh, then uh, uh, I want to say like this, the, then the first register is AT. It's temporary. Also do not use it. This, the compiler will use it. So for instance, if uh, an instruction load immediate or something like this, as we will see in, a, in a, one of the next lectures, it is actually divided into two instructions and the compiler is doing that for you. 
Uh, that will be shown uh, later. But for the moment is just don't use AT. It is not um, impossible to use it, but simply don't use it. It is reserved for the compiler. The ones that we really have full access to are these T registers or temporary registers and S registers, which are called saved registers. The difference between T and S for the moment is not clear, but when we talk about functions, it will become clear that namely who has to save these registers on the stack when you do a function call. Is it the one that's calling, the calling, or is it the uh, caller that has to do this? Who has to do the administration of placing things on the stack? For the moment, don't worry if you don't understand this. We will talk about this uh, much later when we talk about uh, functions. So for the moment, let's say when you're just programming, uh, simple the, the first programs, just use the T registers, they are safe. Uh, they are they are quite uh, normal. This is standard operation. You use T, and a little bit strange. They are from T0 to T7. That is number eight until number 15, and then there are also two here, T8 and T9, number 24 and 25. Don't ask me why they are separated like this, but this is how it is. And in between are these S registers. If you really need more, you could sort of like um, uh, use them, but it's not advised to do. Just use the T registers for the moment. Now the other ones uh, are also have got to do with functions, namely uh, return values and arguments. So you can pass arguments to functions and the functions can return values. When you pass arguments to functions, you have to place them in A0 and A3. We will actually see this with the system calls that we're going to use in one of the next lectures. And also the functions can return things. And this will be placed normally if you have a programmer will place the return values of functions into the V registers. Now I also want to uh, tell you that um, this uh, functions uh, calls functions is not something that actually assembly is uh, uh, has. Uh, functions is not part of uh, assembly language. So uh, that is strange. Uh, functions and procedures that is something of the higher programming languages like uh, Pascal of, or uh, Fortran or uh, maybe C, these uh, languages, they talk about uh, function calls and procedures. But uh, MIPS is already prepared for uh, these kind of things. It already has instructions ready so that you can easily implement functions. And when you do implementing functions, you should follow this convention that uh, you place your arguments in this A registers, A0 until A3, so you can store uh, for 32-bit uh, ints and pass them to a function and then this function can uh, generate some values, maybe it's calculating uh, whatever the square, or I don't know what you want to do in the function, and then this uh, value will be placed in uh, v0 and v1, so you can return two values, two times 32 bits. For the moment, just uh, simply don't use them. Uh, that will be when you have the uh, lecture on functions, that will be uh, about maybe five, six lectures from now. <coughs> and we'll be talking about that. For the moment, just forget them. But with system calls, we will actually use them because the system call is actually a function call. Uh, and then the rest, what do we more do we have? So we have these temporary registers. We have the saved registers. Uh, they're nearly the same, but it depends on who's going to save them on the stack when we have function calls. Then we have the K0 and K1 used by kernel. Well, we're not going to program kernel, so the operating system. So for us, we will just forget them. The global pointer we will also forget. Stack pointer is important when we do functions. The registers have to be saved on the stack at every function call. So we need a stack pointer. Frame pointer we will not use. And the return address is exactly uh, function calls because you want to remember where your program was interrupted by the function call and then come back to the place where it was interrupted. So you need somewhere to store your return address. So these are the 32 um, registers that we have that are placed here in this register file. It's called a register file. 32 registers, each 32 bit containing integers. On top of that, we have high and low which uh, store the result of uh, arithmetic operations like multiply and uh, division. And the rest is uh, instruction register and program counter. So let me see 
if I can then uh, show you this. Well, no, I will show you this in the next lecture. Well, I will show your first program, Hello World. I will show in detail. And I, then I will also again show these 32 uh, registers here, the program, uh, program counter and uh, the high and low register. So see you in the next lecture where I will be analyzing the program uh, Hello World.